What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 67. We have Nazardine Imavov going against Sean Strickland. And we are back kicking off the new year, first card of the year, UFC Vegas 67. We have an 11 fight card. Um, this is a card that has changed a bunch throughout the last couple weeks. A lot of uh, late notice replacements, a lot of new guys making their debut, a um, couple cancellations here or there. But now we are at 11 fights on the card. And I'll be honest right off the bat, uh, I know it's it's been a long break. It's been a, a month off. It's been a long break, and everybody wants to get their bets in. I would I would tread pretty lightly on this card. I mean, we have so many huge favorites. I mean, we have minus 1,000 favorites, minus 800 favorites, minus 650 favorites. Just not a lot of spots sticking out on this card. I mean, if you're a parlay guy, it's probably a card you like, but even then, do you want to parlay up these, these really chalky price tags? So um, it's one of my lightest cards ever ever since I've started tracking three bets that we'll talk about. Um, just not my favorite card from a betting perspective. I actually have more action already for UFC 283 next week than I do have for this week. So I would tread lightly. It's a sketchy card. Um, bankroll management is always key, but yeah, definitely looking forward to watching the fights in general. It's been way too long and, and definitely looking forward to being back here. So uh, before we get started and get into the picks, the bets, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you do want to support me more, be sure to sign up on dfsbythenumbers.com. A uh, great time to sign up with that. You get early access to all my bets. You get the stats you see here on screen, uh, multiple betting articles throughout the week, uh, including the, uh, the full card best bet article where I break down each and every fight from a betting perspective. I give my my pick, the method, the round, all that good stuff with the confidence rating and the best bet for each and every fight. Just a lot of extra content that you do not see on YouTube. So check it out on DFSbythenumbers.com. So uh, with all that out of the way, I say we get right into it and we will start with the first fight of the night. Of course, as you guys may know, it was supposed to be uh, C.R. Eubanks going against Priscilla Cachuera. That fight is off. Uh, uh, Eubanks could not make the, the 125. No shock there. But we kick off the night with a very fun fight. It's a banger. We have Charles Johnson going against Jimmy Flick, and we're going to kick off the night with my first bet of 2023. I have one unit on the under two and a half rounds at minus 120. Got it fairly early in the week. I think I got it like either last week or Sunday or Saturday, Sunday. Um, got it at minus 120. It opened up, I think, at a pick em, Um, And then money's been coming in on it throughout the week. It's currently like minus 180, minus 190. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, Jimmy Flick is a killer be killed fighter. This is a guy that has seen the uh, scorecards only a handful of times. I think he has maybe one decision win. Um, he has one decision lost, and the rest are, are finishes. He's an 88% finish rate by submission, and then also he has been finished four times by knockout, and I think that becomes five here. I like Charles Johnson in this matchup, and kind of a weird line movement on this one here, where Charles Johnson opened up around like minus one, I think it was like minus 140 around there, and now he's a minus 360 favorite. He got up as high as like minus 500, but... Um, yeah, I like Johnson. A little bit too big of a price tag for me personally, but I think it's a good matchup for him. You know, Flick, if he gets his fight down to the mat, he's an absolute wizard. He could be live for a sub. But when Flick tends to not get his way, he tends to kind of fall off a cliff early, and I think uh, Johnson does finish him by strikes in the late first, second round there. So I like the under two and a half rounds. I like the fight doesn't go to the decision, and that is my first bet of the, the very handful of bets I have this week. One unit on that at minus 120, but the line has moved a little bit since I placed it about a week ago. All right, moving on. We have Daniel Argetta going against Nick uh, Aguirre. Uh, don't know how to pronounce his last name. I, I tried to figure it out. I watched all the tape on this guy, and the announcers were like saying like five different pronunciations, so nobody knows how to pronounce it. Uh, I'll say Aguirre for now, but you know, Argetta's a, a big favorite here. He's minus 600, which um, I get it. You know, Aguirre has not seen the second round. He's coming in here on very short notice. And to be honest, I wasn't too impressed with the guy. He has not fought the best competition. So, yeah, I think Argetta should win, but you don't want to get in a bad habit of laying minus 600 on on, on Daniel Argetta. So it's, it's just a pass for me. I was considering maybe violence, um, but minus 240, nothing really sticking out. Like I said, this is a card full of just chalky, chalky price tags and um, don't really want to get involved with, with a lot of these. So this is one of them. Just It's, it's a clear pass. I think Argetta wins, and I think he probably finishes down the stretch, though. Alain Nascimento going against Carlos Hernandez. Um, Nascimento minus 335. Again, another very wide line. Um, you know, he did have a really good win over Jake Hadley. I think that, that win is going to age very well 
in the near future. It already has aged very well. Um, but, you know, Hernandez, he can be taken down. He does have a really good get-up game. It's just, in Asamento, he's he's very good on the mat. He's a legit BJJ black belt. If he gets his fight down to the mat, I think the sub's going to be live. So instead of, like, laying the minus 335 on Nasamento, I would look towards the sub, but but even then, it's only it's only plus 175. They're kind of all over it. Um, it's a it's a pass for me. I, I got to go Nasamento. I could see him either, A, grinding out a, a three-round decision, could be sketchy at times because, like I said, Hernandez does have a really good get-up game. Or B, I, I think he does eventually get the sub, but I'm going to need more than plus 175. So another pass for me, but I do lean Nascimento for this one. Javid Basharat going against Mateus Mendoza. We have Basharat around minus 305, Mendoza at plus 255. Two guys that I'm very high on, two guys that I think have a very bright future. Um, you know, Mendoza's only like 23, 24 years old, and they're kind of feeding this kid to the wolves. Um, I think he has a lot of upside, but... Too soon here. I think it's way too soon here against Javi Basharat. Basharat's a guy that just continues to impress me fight after fight after fight. Wasn't completely sold on the guy in the past. I am now. I think he does win this fight. But minus 305, what are you going to do there? You're going to parlay him up potentially. But, um, you know, I think it could be competitive early. In terms of, like, a, a, a prop bet, I mean, nothing's really sticking out. Like, Javid, he used to be a finisher. I mean, he finished all of his wins outside the UFC, but since he's gotten to the UFC, he has two wins, two decisions. So I, I guess I would lean by decision, but plus 150, not good enough for me. I'm going to another pass fight for me. Lots of passing on this card, but sometimes passing on a fight is 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 is, is the right thing to do, and I think a lot of these fights are, are passes. Mateus Rebecki going against Nick Fiore. Um... Rebecki minus 800, another big, big chalky line here. The fight doesn't go to the decision, is minus 300, another big chalky line there. Um, I think Rebecki wins this fight. I think he wins it probably under one and a half rounds. The o the under one and a half opened up at minus 105. I didn't completely hate it there, but it's now like minus 140, minus 150. So um, I do expect Rebecki to get this done eventually. Most of his wins do come under one and a half rounds. Nick Fiore, I don't believe, has ever been over the one and a half. So if I was forced to play something, it would be the under one and a half here, but not something I'm extremely confident in, and nothing I have a bet on in this one. All right, do have a bet on this next fight. We have Abdul Razak Alassane going against Claudio Ribeiro, and we have um, I have, a, I have a parlay here. So what I did was I parlayed the under one and a half in this fight at minus 230, and I parlayed it with the under one and a half uh, for UFC 283's card, uh, Terrence McKinney. Um, Bonfim under one and a half at minus 195. That came out to plus 117. I have a unit on that. This is probably one of my favorite spots on on the entire card. That this under one and a half rounds. I know that the over is very popular for some reason. The fight goes to decisions very popular. A lot of people seem to be on these overs and everything. I was hoping these these underlines would come down a little bit, but they really haven't moved throughout the week. I saw Fandle has the fight doesn't go to decision at like minus 1300. And you can kind of see why. Well, I think the odds makers got this one right. Um, I think there is going to be violence in this fight. The reason being is, for one, Alassane has a 100% finish rate. Claudio Ribeiro has a 100% finish rate. It's 21 combined wins. All 100% of them have finished inside the distance. The other thing, and why I do like the under 1.5 quite a bit, 20 out of 21 wins, that is 95%, have finished under one and a half rounds, and 19 out of 21 of these guys' wins have finished in the very first round. I mean, I, I got to take advantage of these spots. So I will say, like I said, the, the odds makers are on this one. The the under is very chalky, but chalky, but I don't hate it as a as a potential parlay piece here. Um, and you could argue it could even be wider. I know it's it's crazy to lie to under one and a half this wide, but I mean these guys are finishing. In the first round, I would I would caution anybody. I know it's a intriguing price tag for the over, but 95% of these guys' wins have, have finished in the under one and a half. So um, try to stay away from parlays, uh, but this is a kind of a parlay piece that really did stick out. So one unit on that parlay, I have the under one and a half here at minus 230 in a parlay. I think this fight does finish inside the distance, whether it's Alassane getting the first round knockout or Ribeiro getting the first round knockout. I think somebody's getting knocked out in the first round. All right, next we have Umar Nurmagomedov going against Hayani Barcelos. Um, Nurmagomedov minus 1,000. Barcelos plus 700. Uh, he was at like at plus like 800, I think. But money seems to be coming in on Barcelos after the weigh-ins here. Um, yeah, it's uh, another wide line. Um, but it's really, really hard to pick against Umar Nurmagomedov. I mean, this is a guy that a lot of people, including me, think he's going to fight 
for a title in the in the very near future. And although I think it is a very disrespectful line to Ioni Barcelos, I mean Barcelos is a guy that he's a legit black belt in BJJ, like a third degree black belt, something like that. Um, you know, his wrestling credentials are are insane. Legit wrestling background, 93% takedown defense. His striking's phenomenal. Tons of output, um, some power as well, some toughness. Just a very well-rounded guy on Barcelos. A guy that I always thought was very underrated. Um, but, you know, Barcelos is 35 years old. He's about to be 36 in the bantamweight division. You don't like to see that. He seems to be slowing down a little bit. I mean, losing to, to Victor Henry is something that still doesn't make sense to me to this day. So I just think Umar Nurmagomedov is going to get the win. I think it could be very competitive early on. But, you know, as the fight goes on, I do trust Umar, you know, down the stretch to get this down to the mat. Although Barcelos does have that 93% takedown defense, he has not fought anybody with the caliber wrestling of a Nurmagomedov, Umar Nurmagomedov here. He's fought um, guys that just aren't the best wrestlers in the world. And Nurmagomedov should be able to get him down and control him. So I got to go with Nurmagomedov, but, I mean, what can you do? Minus 1,000. Are you going to parlay him? I know a lot of people are actually parlaying Nurmagomedov, which which would make sense maybe when he was minus 200, 300 like last week, two weeks ago. But, I mean, parlaying him at minus one, it's just not going to do anything. It's just not worth it, especially considering it is it is a pretty disrespectful line here to Barcelos. But give me Nurmagomedov for the win. I'm not, I'm not betting this fight. I would say decision, but the decision prop is minus 200, which is wild. So, uh, big pass. Next, we have Ketlin Vieira going against Raquel Pennington. Um pass big big giant pass i think it's going to be a competitive fight i think it's going to go to the judges scorecards the judges are probably going to mess it up um who knows who knows i, I could see pennington holding Vieira against the cage i can see Vieira taking this fight down to the mat and winning minutes on there um but i'm not i'm not betting on this fight another pretty easy pass and uh, i'll probably don't even watch the fight to be honest all right next we have punaheli soriano going against roman kopilov um yeah, a lot of people on Soriano, like a ton of people, everybody actually, and the line's just not moving, which is weird. Um, I'm picking Kopula with just not a ton of confidence. To be honest, I don't have confidence in either of these guys. Soriano's a guy that has a ton of power. I think if there's a finish in this matchup, it's going to be probably from Soriano and probably in the first round. It's just as the fight goes on, both guys really slow down, but especially Soriano, like when he's winning fights, the majority of the time it, they are in the very first round, whereas Kopilov, kind of the opposite. When he's he's winning fights, um, he's getting these late finishes. So although it looks like he's slowing down, his power still carries late, whereas I can't really say the same thing for Soriano. Um, Soriano potentially has a grappling path if he was if he chooses to use it. It's just not something he's done since the contender series against Jamie Pickett, so can't really count on him to do that. I just think it's going to be a close fight if there's not a finish here. If this fight goes three rounds, which I think it could. Both guys are super, super tough. Both guys have never been knocked out. Uh, I like the striking of Kopilov here, but again, I have no confidence. No confidence in this fight. It's a, it's another pass, but I'm not I'm not laying shock on, on Soriano here. If you like Soriano, I'd probably take him inside the distance or by knockout. The guy has a ton of power, and I think that's how he wins. All right, next we have Dan Ige going against Damon Jackson. My my third and final bet here. I have a half a unit on Dan Ige to win inside the distance at plus 225. Uh, I guess I jumped the gun. Um, I see plus a lot of plus 240s out there. I see like a plus 280 out there for Dan Ige inside the distance. So I got plus 225. Um, yeah, I guess I, I jumped the gun there on that one. But I like Dan Ige in this matchup a bit. Um, he opened up a pretty sizable dog. I think it was like plus 130, which is just wild. And by the time I got done taping the fight and researching it, um, it was a pick I missed the line, unfortunately. So if you got uh, plus money on Dan Ige, I am very, very jealous of you because I, I would really have liked that. But yeah, I think um, I think the line is, is getting to be about right here. I think Ige should be around the minus 130, minus 150 range because da Damon Jackson does have a path to victory. We have seen Ige struggle getting taken down, getting held down, but he's getting taken down and held down by guys like Mosvar Evlewev, top 10 guy, Korean Zombie, top 10 guy. Uh, who else took him down? Uh, Mursad Bektic got him down and won a round against Dan Ige. Really good wrestler in Bektic. And then, again, he's losing to guys like Josh Emmett, which, by the way, that Josh Emmett fight was very close. Very close. And then he lost a five-round fight against uh, Calvin Cater, another top 10 guy. So he's losing to... He's 1-4 in his last five fights, but he's losing to top 10 guys. I can tell you right now, Jackson's not a top 10 guy. I mean, Jackson's 4-1 and one in his last five five fights, but he's he's beating guys like like Camilla Kirk, you know, guys like Charles Rosa. Um, you know, if Damon Jackson fought Evloev, Cater, Emmett, you know, what what would happen? I mean, he'd probably get finished in the first round. So 
I think this is a must-win fight for Dan Ige. Dan Ige, if he loses this fight, there's a good chance he's going to be cut. If he loses this fight, he's going to be, what, 1-5 in five in his last six fights. Um, this is a must-win for Dan Ige. And I, I like the toughness of Dan Ige. He's well-rounded. He's a BJJ black belt in his own right. He's never been knocked out, never been submitted. Um, I love the cardio of Dan Ige as well. Damon Jackson, he's going to go for takedowns here. But, you know, when this fight's on the feet, it's, it's Dan Ige all day. I know Jackson's striking looks to be somewhat improved, but Jackson's very hittable. He's very open to be hitting to hit to the body, and Dan Ige mixes it up to the body very well. And Dan Ige hits very, very hard. So I not only like Dan Ige, but I like Dan Ige to go out here and, and get a knockout. Uh, Jackson's been knocked out three times. Like I said, that striking defense is a concern. The chin's a concern. Uh, Jackson's been finished in 100% of his losses. So I like Dan Ige to finish this fight inside the distance. So um, like I said, I have a half unit on that at plus 225, and there's much better price tags out there. So give me some Dan Ige this week. And then finally, Sean Strickland going against Nazardine Imavov. Just a weird fight. Um, you know, I was, I initially I was like more interested in the, in the Gastelum and the in the in the Strickland fight. And then now that I'm thinking about, it, I kind of wanted to see that that Gastelum fight. Um, it's just a weird fight. It's going to be at 205 pounds. There's um, an interview with Strickland where he's talking about how he hasn't been doing much training. He's been eating like crap and stuff. Uh, don't really like to hear that, but. It's just, it's a pass for me. I, I'm very high on Nazardine Imavov. I really am. I think he's a really good striker. I just have question marks. You know, what is his cardio going to look like in the third, fourth, and fifth round? We saw him slow down a ton in that Buckley fight, right? And Imavov weighed in today, and he weighed in at, I think, like, 194. And Sean Strickland weighed in at 204. So I'm not sure what, what's going on there. I know Sean Strickland could not make the weight. Um, but, yeah, Sean Strickland's going to have a little bit of a weight advantage here. I don't know if that's going to help him or not. But yeah, if Sean Strickland shows up and he's 80, 80%, 75%, 80% of his, his normal self, he should win this fight. But yeah, if, if he if he slows down, if he doesn't look great, I mean, Imavov could could definitely win this one. Um, money's been pouring in on Imavov the last couple of days. Um, I don't know. I think it's a close fight. I think a pick em makes a little bit more sense to me. I, I, I can't trust Sean Strickland with my money. I, I never can. Um, it's just not fun betting on Sean Strickland. He throws a lot of volume with very little power. He doesn't wrestle when he has a clear wrestling advantage in the fight. Just a fight I'm content with staying away from. So a uh, big pass for me. I, I lean Strickland, but hit the whole 205 short notice interview stuff kind of sketches me out of even thinking about laying any money on this fight, especially on, on Sean Strickland here. So that is about it, guys. Um, like I said, it's a light card. Nothing... Nothing's really sticking out much on, on this card. I have one unit on the under 2.5 in the Johnson Flick fight at minus 120. That line has moved throughout the week. It's it's now minus 180, minus 190. I have a half unit on Dan Ige inside the distance, plus 225. Um, that's plus 240, plus 280 out there, I see. So you can still get a better price on that. And then I have that that parlay, the one unit parlay, plus 117, the under 1.5 in the Ribeiro Alassane fight, and then the under 1.5 in the Bonfim McKenney fight next week. And then I do have a, a pretty big play next week as well for UFC 283. So, yeah, I mean, I'm keeping it light this week. Um, it's been a while. Don't want to go out there and just empty my entire bankroll on, on a card like this where I think the odds makers got it, got a lot of these right. If not, like these lines are are kind of wild this week. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But light card for me. Um, yeah, that's about it, guys. If you guys can please leave a like. If you guys do enjoy the content, it does go a long way. Subscribe to the channel. Check out DFSbythenumbers.com. I'm going to start getting into the rest of 283 probably tonight, tomorrow. Maybe get some uh, early bets out there. Check out the, the new Best Bet Show. Doing a, a new Best Bet Show twist on Saturday, two hours prior to the prelims. The prelims start at 4. We'll be going live at 2. Be sure to check out that. should be a fun show doing that weekly. And other than that, follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers. If you guys have any questions. And yeah, guys, best of luck for UFC Vegas 67. My advice is to tread lightly. And my advice is to also sit back, enjoy the fights. We got fights back and looking forward to a great 2023. See you guys later.